Today we're going to build this plywood hall table and we're going to do it in 24 hours because arbitrary time limits make everything more exciting. So Chris and I decided to challenge ourselves and add some arbitrary rules when making a piece of furniture and I decided to be the guinea pig for this one. The basic idea is that I would attempt to make a piece of furniture in 24 hours and Chris would film it. Then hopefully in the near future we will switch places and Chris can give it a try. We also decided that we wanted to go all the way from the initial design to the finished piece within the 24 hour period. So it wasn't just a race to build, but also an exercise in designing and organizing the build as well. Okay, so far you've been watching me break down some plywood, but let's back up a bit and talk about the design process. Um, what all do you want on it? So I think, you know, kind of a thin top with maybe two or three cubbies. Are we doing plywood or hardwood or do you want to do both? I, I mean, I think probably plywood just for Simplicity. speed. There really isn't a lot that's going to go in it, in it. I'm a simple man. I don't have, I don't have a lot, you know, we don't want to bite off too much. Right. Um, but I also don't want to like, you know, go super simple. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Done. This guy likes it. Hang on. <laughs> 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 I like that color combo better. I wasn't going for that, but with the, whatever, it works. Stack a couple bits of plywood to make legs, so that and that way we can do some sort of curved. Well, should we just start like drawing out some ideas and yeah. see where we go? It is crazy how much faster it is, like pen and paper. I think that's the one. All right, let's work off of that assumption. Okay, fairly well explained to Chris and Sean. I think we get the idea. So with the design pretty much finished, the first thing to do was have Craig, the X-Carve, cut our template, which we did in a half for the sake of simplicity and time. From there, I could start building, and as we saw earlier, I started to break down some plywood into rough sized parts, but uh, don't celebrate there too early, buddy. So we thought we had enough plywood. We were certain there was a whole sheet in there. In fact, Sean found a whole sheet, right? There it is. Uh, but you know what? It turns out that is the side of the plywood storage. So now we have to find some more plywood. Luckily, we found some. Found some what? Plywood. So once we were back from picking up a new sheet of plywood and burning about two hours, I could get back to work. We're off to a good start so far. All right, so we've got all the pieces for the bases cut to rough length and now we have to figure out the angle. Did I explain that right? You explain it to me, Sean. Um, we want this whole angle to be 95 degrees, so it's a little bit obtuse. And so we decided 37.5 and then 95 minus 37.5 gives us 57.5. <laughs> what a math teacher you are. Look at his shirt even. Oh this guy my just God. freaking I'm a, loves equations. I'm a nerd. To explain a bit more, we designed the piece so that the legs angled up and outward at 5 degrees. So our bottom angle was 95 and our top angle was 85. Then we just arbitrarily split them where it made sense and went from there. At this point, I started cutting the angles before gluing them up because I wanted them to be double the... Th because I wanted to double the thickness of the base. And as I was just about to clamp the first one, I realized that. Mm -hmm. I feel like we should have like glued them up first and then done all the, like we should just glue this next one, we should just glue them as okay. rectangles. So we're just working with thick pieces. Yeah. We live and learn, right? So what happens when you try to rush a project. So I then glued up the rest of my blanks before shaping. Makes so much more sense now. With all of the leg parts in the clamps, I can now turn my attention to working on the cabinet, which was just a simple mitered box with a couple vertical dividers. Let's 
let's hear it. If you go a little over 45 uh -huh. for, for box miters, okay. <laughs> cabinet miters, whatever, that guarantees that that outside edge, the, the most important, you know, the corner, the outside corner yeah. is going to be totally closed up. And the inside might, uh. you, might you know, we would rather the outside be closed up right. and the inside be slightly open rather than the outside slightly open. Good inside call. Closed. Especially if we're edge banding, we won't see anything. Yeah, you're going to cover it anyway. Yeah. But on the outside of the carcass, you will you'll see have, it. That's how you'll get that perfect looking miter. Nice tip. What are we doing here? We're putting in the vertical partitions. Yeah. So this is a nice little trick for, okay. a, for a domino machine, or I guess it, you could use it with biscuits. Advanced dominoing. So here's here's my line where I want my uh, vertical partition to be, and this this is the outside of the edge. So it's going to be like that. So basically, you have it where you want, and now you're going to just essentially tip it down into place. Yep. Clamp it into place. Okay. Yeah, so then what we want to do next is just mark out where we want our dominoes. <clears throat> so now we can first, doesn't really matter which, which one we do first, but we can start up here and do, do these, and then okay. we'll just flip, flip the domino down and do those. It's pretty, pretty easy. And right. then I'm gonna do wide, wide setting on this one so that we can shift it a little, a little once it's in. So the legs have been set aside for a while while they glued up. We got our whole box put together, which you just saw us doing. And now we're back over here. We just readjusted the angle of the sled. And now we can start cutting the uh, miters on, on what'll be the bottom stretcher of the sub-assemblies of the leg. Is that right? Yes. So like Chris just talked about, at this point I went back to working on the legs now that the cabinet was in the clamps. And this process was just a matter of setting up my sled to cut the proper angles, then adjusting it to cut the corresponding angles. piece like this, especially since the leg design is an enclosed shape, I would often do a lot of the shaping of individual parts before the glue up, but for the sake of time on this one, we decided to glue up the leg assemblies, then I would do all of the shaping after they had dried.
This is getting exciting, isn't it? All right, real quick, let's talk about this month's featured viewer project, which comes from Nate Crilly at Nate Crilly Woodworks on Instagram and YouTube. Nate made this great looking bed for he and his wife, and it's pink, so you gotta love that. Go check out his work on our website, which we will link to in the description. We're going to be featuring a new project each month, and we're happy to be using Squarespace to help us build the website. Both Chris and I have been using Squarespace to build and maintain our websites for years now, and honestly, it's one of the best choices I made when starting my business. At the time, I had no idea what I needed to do to build a website, but Squarespace makes it super easy to get up and running with plenty of professional looking templates to choose from, as well as making things like purchasing domains really simple. Squarespace also has plenty of e-commerce tools to help you grow your business, things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow us to easily manage online transactions and not get bogged down with mundane tasks so that we can devote more time to doing the things we enjoy, like making a table in 24 hours or making an awesome pink bed. So if you're thinking about starting a website or even if you already have one, go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, thanks Squarespace. And if you wanna have one of your projects featured, check out the link in the description. Now let's get back to the build. So as soon as we were back in the shop the next morning, I started to mill up some walnut for the edge banding and got that attached to my cabinet so that the glue could be drying while I went back to work on the base. With that done and set aside, I went back to working on the legs, which first needed to be rough cut with a jigsaw, which was already pretty tedious, but then add in these shenanigans and it gets exponentially worse. Once that was out of the way, I could use my template and a router to shape both leg assemblies. With those done, I could trim them to height on my table saw, then do some cleanup sanding on my little belt sander. Around this point, Chris had to start on his own project, so the camera becomes far more stationary from here on out. Apologies, or you're welcome, depending on your propensity for motion sickness. If you're gonna spew, spew into this. But at this point, I started to work on the stretchers, which also acted as risers to separate the top from the base. I could then domino and glue those in place, then give my edge banding a quick trim, and besides sanding and finish, we were pretty much there. So the piece is pretty much finished. It's been 24 hours. What'd you think of the process? 
I think it was a, an interesting concept. It was a fun challenge. Um, I think my biggest takeaway from it though was uh, obviously the time aspect of it. We become so obsessed with doing things quickly and we talk about how tools can increase our time efficiency, but we really lose kind of the whole idea of doing things in the amount of time needed to create the best quality product. And that was my big takeaway. I made a lot of mistakes in this because I was rushing. And for me, I always wanna take whatever time I need to do the best work I possibly can. Yeah, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Um, I understand it from a professional's point of view where you're trying to be as efficient as possible because time is money. But realistically, and for most people watching this, we're hobbyists. So any time that you spend out in the shop woodworking is time and spent doing what it is that you enjoy. So take a step back. Go out there, enjoy yourself, and just take your time. Yeah, time, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, video's over. <laughs>